Hi, I'm Matt, and welcome back to Soil Lab. Today, we wanna to show you some data on some seed starts and some seed start mixtures and potting mixtures. Now, if you're like me and like a lot of other people, you're getting pretty excited for spring to be here and you're ready to start growing some plants. A lot of us might wanna get a little bit of a head start indoors, harden those plants off, and then get them into the garden to have that competitive advantage for when the weather is warming. So what we did is chose four commercially available products, two seed start mixtures, as well as two potting mixtures. And we're gonna compare those both in the above ground growth and vigor of those plants, but we're also gonna show you that data and show you where a lot of those differences might lie. I want to start off with just what some of the similarities are amongst all four of these rooting mixes that we have. First off, they're all organic based. Um, with those being organic based, they're largely either peat or forest product based. And we'll get into those details a little bit more later. Another similarity, and if we look at the soil data, we'll see that they all have the optimal soil pH. That's because all of these had limestone added to adjust that pH within these mixtures. So with what we've tested, we can expect that optimal pH for a start. So that's good news. Where we see, start to see some of the differences are where some of the additives are. In both of our starting mixes, what we'll notice is that they also have mycorrhiza added. One of them has a single species of mycorrhiza, another has four species. For those of us unsure what mycorrhiza is, that's a fungus that infects the root, but it has that symbiotic relationship, that mutually beneficial relationship with the plant. And functionally it expands or has the potential to expand the root zone of that plant and enhance water and nutrient uptake. Now in both of our potting mixes, those both had a wetting agent added, which was really interesting because in one of the potting mixes that had the wetting agent plus synthetic fertilizers, it was actually quite hydrophobic and hard to wet up initially. So let's go ahead and look at each of these above ground, and then we'll layer in the data and what those other additives were for each of these. These two soils are both branded or marketed as a seed start mix. So this first seed start mix is 90 plus percent peat with mycorrhiza and perlite. So predominantly peat, but had no organic or synthetic fertilizers added. And as you can see, this, these plants aren't quite as strong, aren't as durable, and don't have as much leaf development as some of those others. In our next soil, this was also labeled or marketed as a seed start soil. That's gonna be 55 plus percent peat, but also include cocoa core, some poultry litter, and some feather meal as organic nitrogen sources. And we'll likely see um, that addition of fertilizer represented in the soil test data here shortly. So in our first potting mix, we can notice that this one looks a lot woodier. It has a lot different appearance than most of the other mixes. This is predominantly forest byproducts that make up this potting mix, um, but it does have some organic fertilizer added. It has poultry litter, uh, feather meal, as well as sulfate of potash um, added here. Above ground, I'll let you be the judge, but these all look relatively similar and they all look like they're showing some signs of discoloration or chlorosis, and that's likely tied to a nutrient deficiency. It's notable that all of these were watered the same throughout the study. Then we get to our fourth uh, potting mix. This is a commercially available potting mix uh, that has a peat base with some forest byproducts, has the wetting agent added, but I mentioned it was a bit hydrophobic, but this does also have those synthetic nutrients added. So some of the synthetic nutrients included, and these are both polymer coated and non-polymer coated, all the same compounds. We have ammonium nitrate, ammonium phosphate, calcium phosphate, and potassium sulfate. And we're gonna see on the soil test results those represented. So let's go ahead, we can see the above ground growth here. Let's go ahead and dive below ground and look at these soil test results. These soil tests were pulled three weeks after planting, so just about one week ago today. So as we look at these soil test results, we're gonna look at this one first. This soil, the seed start, was deficient in pretty much every single nutrient except for magnesium, uh, and then sodium was within range. And why I care about sodium is I just wanna make sure it's not there in excess. 
And so if we're using this 90 plus percent peat with mycorrhiza seed start, it might be to our benefit to add a nutrient um, at the time of seeding. I was just talking to a local gardener and she really likes to add liquid fertilizers uh, to all of her starts. We can also use maybe just some of our vermicompost leachate to help boost the nutrition in a seed start tray such as this one. As we move to our next seed start mix and we look below ground, um, we'll remember that this one had about 55% peat, but did have um, some organic fertilizer additions. And as we look at the soil test results, we really see that nitrogen is deficient, as well as that suite of micronutrients, which we see pretty typical in many of our bagged uh, soils. Again, pH right in range. As we move to our potting mixes, um, we see some, some higher nutrition in, in these, and that's largely tied to the addition of either an organic or an inorganic fertilizer. So in this first one, this was that forest product base with um, organic fertilizers added. Feather meal, poultry litter, and sulfate of potash. And we can see every nutrient is in range or just above range with the exception of nitrogen and a few of those micronutrients. So felt really great about where we were here below ground, but we see that nitrogen is still a limiting factor above ground. So all three of these could have benefited from additional nitrogen at the time of seeding. Now, lastly, we've got the potting mix that's predominantly peat, but also had that suite of uh, inorganic nutrients added, ammonium nitrate being an example of those. If we look at this one plant in particular, there was actually a polymer coated fertilizer prill just happened to be right at the base of that plant. And it was just like a nitrogen IV drip to that cuke. And we can see that in the growth here above ground. So what we were seeing below ground and actually a surplus of nutrient in that soil, we're seeing with um, exceptional growth above ground as well. So I'll let you be the judge for how you would deal with this. But for me, I'm looking at, um, I'm looking at sampling uh, my potting mixes, especially if I'm doing this on scale, so that I know just what nutrients to add so that I can get the robust growth that I need for that plant to be hardened off and hit the garden with the best chance of success for the season and the best nutrient density. So if I come back full circle, what did I just say? What I'm saying here is that all of our potting mixes or seed start mixes are a little bit different and we need to know before we grow. So if you're gonna go with a fully organic potting mix or seed start, maybe think about supplementing at least with nitrogen to give your, your plants that boost that they need. If you are gonna go with that potting mix that includes the inorganics, this is what you can expect. But do note that you're probably still gonna be a little bit low on those micronutrients, which again is very, very typical for our bagged soils. Well, I'm hopeful that this is gonna help you know a little bit before you grow and help you get better and more nutritious plants in your garden. I'll look forward to seeing you again in the lab soon. Please like, subscribe, comment below what you'd like to see in the future, and we'll see you out there.